buen día en una de las lunas de Saturno. One day, in one of the moons of Saturn, a scientific expedition found the remains of a stranded spaceship from millions of years ago. And moreover, they discover a new technology and source of energy called Aleph, unknown to humans until that moment. Using the same technology that they have discovered, although there is not much Aleph left, they managed to mount an expedition towards the broken planet. The expedition is motivated by private interests, which recruit different paramilitary factions. Uh, these are battle-hardened adventurous people that, for a good amount of money, are determined to cross the galaxy for this adventure. Once they're there, they have an accident that renders their technology useless. Uh, furthermore, they have consumed all of the small amount of Aleph that allowed them to accomplish this interstellar journey. Then they begin to fight each other for their supremacy and for gaining control over Aleph and the secret of the alien technology that will take them back to Earth. Herrick is a local on the planet and he tries to organize a resistance. Harrick doesn't share his fellow people's idea of remaining non-violent at any cost and submitting to the invasion. Harrick's problem is that he needs a squad to fight against humans, and it turns out that the only people he can rely on are humans themselves. Not only can't they go back to Earth, but also their respective leaders are confronting each other. If this situation continues, they may exterminate each other. And this is where Harrick comes in. He can't be picky and choosy about who he, who he recruits. Harrick gives them new hope. But each is an individual and each has their own reasons for, for joining this particular fight. This game is an unusual mix. Although it's a, co a cooperative game and it's an online game, in many ways the story and the, the things that you have to do within the missions feels like a single player game. You know, I always end up losing with you. We're all going to lose if we don't fight together. And you always have an answer for everything. So what's your plan? To find the three protectors. Only they can invoke the ancient world's technology that our people abandoned thousands of years ago. Once the technology is in our grasp, we can teleport the humans back to their own planet with no way to return. The protectors are a myth. It's a load of crap. If that's your plan, then we're really screwed. Adventure is the core of the game. It's an adventure where a new enemy, uh, a human being, appears. <laughs> it's not like an AI programmed to simulate that it is smart, but that at the end lets itself be killed. The antagonist won't forgive you. The antagonist is the spice of the recipe. You don't know who it is. Uh, it might be any character. You don't know where it will appear. You don't know how it will approach. If the antagonist is very good at it, there might be one or two or even three raiders dealing with the antagonist while the rest of the squad tries to accomplish the mission. As the antagonist improves his skills, he understands little by little that in each mission there are a certain number of ways to achieve victory, and not only killing the protagonists, um, that are the key to achieving success. Therefore, thanks to this simple one antagonist versus four protagonist premise, new possibilities arise depending on where you are playing. You could take advantage of everything 
everything you have learned playing as a raider, but you have to relearn to play as an antagonist, because the game makes you use your resources in, in, in a different way. Uh, and the antagonist gives the game an extra feature that would be hard to provide for the artificial intelligence, the roguery and mischief of a human player. Uh, this forces you to adapt your gaming style to the others, while also trying to complete the adventure, which gives a whole new dimension to it, enriched by the players themselves. It is not just what the game offers, it is the personality that the players add to the adventure. It's not uncommon to play a cooperative game in which you experience a great adventure. It's something we've seen before. When you're playing with your friends, you feel the urge to support them. You seek companionship. Furthermore, in the past, we played shooters and action games that had a strong competitive component. In that case, you are focused on defeating your rivals and being better than them. I think that the most interesting fact about Raiders is that it gathers all these aspects together. Firstly, you begin with a cutscene uh, in a great adventure with a rich universe and many characters with different backgrounds and that won't respond to the different situations in the same way. Secondly, the cooperative adventure, the experience that you'll get playing with a squad of four characters forced to cooperate to survive the missions, since the difficulty is really high. And finally, the competitive gameplay that merges with the campaign, thanks to the antagonist's presence.